got yourself a new zygo. Wow, congratulations, well done you. But now what? Now that she's home, you can enjoy the blooms. You're happy with your purchase. Now it's time to get her settled in and grow well. And then hopefully with the next new growth, more blooms and more of that gorgeous fragrance. So coincidentally, I got myself a new Zygo as well. <laughs> but while I was at the store, I couldn't exactly delve too deeply into the state of this orchid. I couldn't exactly pull her out of the pot. So what I was doing was checking the state of the potting media, whether it is wet or is it dry. So I'm going to talk to you about what you should do if you're looking at this orchid in your store, wherever it is and what you should be looking for if you decide to bring it home, your decision-making process. Checking the state of the potting media is an obvious one because we want to know is the media wet or is it dry? This gives us an idea of what we are up against when we get this orchid home. Do we need to water it immediately? Do we have other errands to run and the zygo will be in a warm car? If the media is wet or even damp, then there is no immediate rush to attend to the new zygo if we have other things to do. Ideally though we want to get our zygos out of any hot car as soon as possible because these are cool growers and the stress it is already under will be exacerbated. Our main goal from here on in having made the decision to purchase the zygo is to not add any more stress factors after the purchase. So media wet or dry we have to get the zygo home as quickly as as possible if it is wet and we have another errand to run that won't take up too much of our time that is a bonus but if it is dry then the decision to bring the zygo home straight away and tend to it is our top priority now ideally also prior to our purchase we want to see can we see any pests or can we see any kind of snail damage at the base if that's not really obvious to tell because you know sometimes we don't want to scrutinize too much with all eyes on us like what are we doing are are we actually going to buy it or not? It can draw some curious attention for sure. Another thing we would also like to do is check the root system. But again, it's a little bit of a scrutiny to be pulling an orchid out of a pot putting it back on the shelf and possibly not buying it that could also raise a few eyebrows but maybe we can have a look at the base of the orchid see are we getting new root growth what can we glean just with a visual eye whether this orchid is okay to bring home and help it to survive as opposed to it just going to go and decline straight away after it finishes blooming now checking the pseudobulbs is also very very obvious are they plump or are they wrinkled and more often than not when it comes to zygopetalums, they will be wrinkled because, well, this orchid is under a lot of stress and we don't even know if the roots in the pot are viable. We are going by our judgment and it is a judgment call at this point in time whether the wrinkling of the pseudobulbs is too far gone for our comfort and we proceed with the purchase or not. That is on an individual basis what you are comfortable with and not. I took the risk and I brought this beautiful Zygo home because I feel as though I know what I'm doing <laughs> and I hope it doesn't prove me wrong. But yeah, these pseudobulbs are already very, very wrinkled and we need to make that decision. Is she on the edge of dying or is there something I can work with here? Anyway, she is home as you can tell. I feel I've got something here that I can work with. Then the next thing, once you're at home with your new zygo and you possibly have other zygos in your collection or maybe you don't have any other zygos in your collection, this could be your first. If you have other zygos, don't place it with the other zygos simply because you know your other ones are doing well where they are. So you're gonna put your new zygo there as well. Or should this be your first zygo, don't put it with your other orchids for two reasons. First of all, if you're growing other zygos, your other zygos are already acclimated to your space. Your new one has only just begun that process and may not be able to tolerate the same conditions. Keep it cooler than you normally would your other zygos and do not expose it to the high light that you would normally expose your other zygos to. Give it a cool place with adequate light, but no direct sun at this point in time. And secondly, if 
our naked eye cannot perceive any pests, just in case it has snails or any other unwanted hitchhikers, keeping it away from your collection protects the rest of your orchids from any possible cross-contamination as well. The next thing once you're home with it is, depending on the state of the media in the pot, you can soak the pot with a mixture of seaweed and cow mag. If the pot is soaking wet when you bring the orchid home, do not soak it with this mixture because you don't want to perpetuate a possible problem in the pot. Let the media dry out to a point of dampness before soaking with calcium, magnesium and seaweed. But don't forget to do this step while you're waiting for your media to dry out. This is important. It helps to alleviate a bit of the stress the orchid is under. The seaweed gives it some hormones, some energy, and the cow mag definitely boosts whatever sustenance this orchid is needing to help it settle in. Now these orchids can take quite a good dose of supplements, especially when in bloom and in active growth, which is what zygos are doing seeing as they bloom at the same time as growing a new growth. So you can put the cow mag and the seaweed all into one with 100 parts per million of cow mag and 50 parts per million of seaweed. That should do the trick. If the PPM is higher than that, that's fine because zygos can take it. But you want your pH to be no lower than 6.8. And this is important because the media in these pots is usually already old and broken down. So a higher pH will guarantee that the cow mag will be available for absorption. Thankfully, our new zygo is in bloom when we bought it, which helps to suppress the urge to repot immediately. Now, if you have new roots growing on the new growth already, then I would not wait a week for the orchid to settle in. I would repot immediately. Now, what I've just said would appear contradictory to what I mentioned earlier about avoiding any further stress for the foreseeable future. But in the case of zygos, new roots are paramount when it comes to repotting because that will be the least stressful for the orchid to get accustomed to your media of choice. Repotting a zygo at this stage with no new roots growing though, will definitely set it back, if not stall it completely, and the orchid can go into shock. The media your zygo came in from where you bought it will be highly water retentive, and you may need to make some adjustments to your watering routine for this one specific pot, but it will be worth it long term. And luckily, working in our favor is that zygos like to be evenly moist all the time, and even though the media may have the appearance of soil, it will be better off in that media while it is not growing new roots than if you were to go in and repot it straight away. Check if your zygo needs to be watered, maybe every day, every second day, depending on how warm or how much airflow you have in the space where you're going to keep her as an interim period. Check if your zygo needs to be watered while you wait for new roots. Now you can use a bamboo skewer or I prefer to stick my finger in the pot to about a quarter of the length to test how damp the surface is. If the surface is damp, the rest of the pot is definitely wet enough and you don't have to water. Personally, I shy away from using bamboo skewers because I don't want to be stabbing a root in the pot. So I use my finger and if there is a little bit of soil sticking to the finger, then great, the pot is damp enough. If your zygo is wobbly in the pot, then you know there will be issues when it comes time to repot. But understand that that is normal. That can happen. It is not often that we get zygos that come in perfect condition, totally stable in the pot without any issues. But I would not worry once again, new roots will come and from there on in, we are back in control. When it comes to watering in future, make sure that your media stays on the damp side. The one-off calcium, magnesium and seaweed soak is plenty for the foreseeable future. And if it comes time to fertilize, then soaking the pot is a good way to go about it but don't forget to flush the pot before you do a fertilizer soak just so that the roots do not get congested with any salts. Remembering that the media has started to break down and all you are doing is waiting for new roots to freshen the media and repot. And that is what I'm going to be doing with my new zygo from here on in. Exactly what I just explained to you. When I see new roots growing, that is when I will repot we shall be updating at that same time and I will take you along during the repot and we will see what's going on in the pot. Now to counteract any pests now that you've got it home, 
or possible snails, give the leaves a wipe with clean water and then lightly mist with garlic alcohol, making sure that you do not do this in the sun. Good airflow, but no direct sunlight while you're doing this. For the media, however, spritz hydrogen peroxide around the surface of the media and around the base of the orchid to get ahead of any possible snails that cannot be detected with the naked eye and or snail eggs that might just be waiting for the right time to hatch. This can all happen while the orchid is in the pot. And of course, keeping an eye on the orchid in the coming days or weeks, depending on the status of root growth, whether you have any or don't have any, taking into consideration the fact we are waiting for new roots, keeping an eye on that pot is obviously very important because the surface media treatment may only do the trick for so long and whatever else is lurking beneath, a little bit lower, may start to come to the top. Any kind of weird signs coming up, we don't want any snails munching on any new roots. A reapplication of hydrogen peroxide on a regular basis just to be on the safe side is very, very highly recommended. Once you've done all this prep treatment with the cleaning of the leaves, the alcohol and the hydrogen peroxide, place your orchid back into the cool area segregated from the rest of your collection and enjoy the blooms. As we don't have any new roots growing, as is in my case. Even if you were to have new roots growing and you are repotting straight away, please do not put your orchid straight back into with your zygos for at least a week to 10 days. Monitor what is happening. Check if there's any pests starting to develop now that the whole thing has been disturbed and repotted. They might become active or they might start to hatch. So give it at least 10 days, two weeks before you incorporate your new zygo back into the collection. Finally, Document your new zygote, take pics of the blooms, the whole plant, anything that you want to have on record for future reference. And if you don't have a name tag for the zygote and you just got a generic little sticker, Google search is very helpful by typing in the genus, typing in zygopetalum, and pulling up images to see if any bloom matches what your zygote looks like and very often the name will be under one of those images. These are not rare hybrids, so there's plenty of images on the web, easily determined. There is not much rocket science with the differentiation of blooms. These hybrids that you find in garden centers, big box stores, or your supermarket, they will be very, very easy to identify on the internet just by Googling Zygopetalum blooms and everything will pop up and then you can start comparing. Then all that is left to do is make your tag. And and now it's official. She's been cleaned, she's been checked, she's been soaked with calcium and magnesium and seaweed, and she has now got time to acclimate. If she has new roots and you could repot straight away, even better. Just give her some time away from your collection before introducing the rest of the gaggle to their new compadre. I hope that some of this information was helpful. I am excited about my Zygo. Welcome to anybody that has just bought themselves a new Zygo. I am happy to have mine. This is a rare, rare find in a garden center in southern Spain. <laughs> These guys, especially the Luisendorf, is not something we find here at all. I really hope that this was helpful. If you have any questions, if I didn't circle around and back to a thought, please let me know in the comments. I am going to put my zygote back in a cool shaded location indoors and whenever I pass her by I shall be enjoying that gorgeous honeysuckle fragrance. Beautiful, very happy. Thank you so very very much for watching. I appreciate your time. Have yourselves a beautiful day on one condition though please that you stay safe. Take care. Bye.